Today, I'm gonna to be going over how I manage my time as a full-time civil engineer in the US and as a part-time YouTuber. I'll be going over my top five tips and strategies for staying productive and managing my time at work and as a YouTuber. And now I'd like to thank Grammarly for sponsoring this video. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that I use to help save me time whenever I'm writing emails, proposals, or reports. And it's easy to integrate into your everyday workflow because you can just install it on your browser extension. Grammarly is free, but it also comes with a premium version that does a lot more. As an engineer, I tend to receive and send out a lot of emails. So Grammarly helps me avoid sending out embarrassing emails that contain spelling and grammar mistakes. It offers me suggestions on how I can better communicate my message, such as suggesting list or even highlighting key items such as due dates. Grammarly also helps me with its vocabulary suggestions so I don't overuse words and its clarity suggestions help make my message more clear and concise. Save time on your work and emails with Grammarly. Go to grammarly.com slash to sign up for a free account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today to help save you time and work more efficiently. You can also find the links in the description below. First strategy that I implement all the time is the 80-20 rule or the Pareto principle. It basically says that 80% of your results come from 20% of your efforts. So for example, 80% of the land is owned by 20% of the people, or if you're a business, 80% of your revenue comes from 20% of repeat clients. Or if you're trying to lose weight like me, 80% of losing weight is about diet and 20% is exercise. If you wanna learn more about it, I'll link a book in the description below. I essentially condense it down to the most important thing is to keep the most important thing the most important thing. I find myself getting bombarded by a lot of tasks and it's really important to figure out which ones are going to contribute the most and which ones are not that high a priority. So for example, at work, I work on structural engineering of buildings where I basically design the skeletal system of the building so they don't fall down during earthquakes. And when we're working with the architects and contractors, there's always going to be deadlines and deliverables. And for me, it's always important to ask that question of what exactly do they need? For example, when we're doing design submittals, should we focus on the structural calculations or should we focus on the drawings? Most of the times it's the drawings. The team's going to be looking at our drawings, how the structure is going to be built, the sizes of the slabs and the walls and the columns. That's what the team's going to be using. So if we focus our efforts on that, that's gonna be more effective to the team. If we give them a set of calcs, though, although it's important for us as the engineers, they're really not gonna be having any use of that. So when it comes to the deadlines, what should we focus on? Most of the time, it's going to be the drawings. And even when I'm doing my YouTube videos, I always ask myself, what's the most important thing? For YouTube, it's going to be the thumbnail, the title, and then the content. How is the content going to help you in some way as a viewer? I don't focus too much on the camera, the lighting, even though that's important in some way, that's not what's gonna keep you coming back or get more viewers. The title and the thumbnails are so important because you can have the best content in the world, but if you can't get anybody to be intrigued by it, it's pretty much useless. No one's gonna watch it. No one's gonna click it. Your video is not gonna have any impact because no one clicked on it. And then I focus on the content. Is it entertaining enough? Is it educational enough? Am I providing some sort of value? That's what's going to get the viewers to come back and it's going to help them out as well. The second strategy I use is batching. I find that I'm a lot more productive when I can focus on one task for an extended amount of time, maybe to 25 minutes, 45 minutes, but I'm just doing that one task, I can get all those tasks done in one sitting instead of spreading it out every single day. For example, at work, I like to turn off my email notifications because if I left those on, I'd be getting that, that ring every 10 minutes, it's disturbing me and I always have to look at it. Even though it's a small interruption, I heard somewhere that it's like every time you get interrupted, it takes you 15 minutes to get back into your work and get fully involved in what you were doing before. So if you're constantly interrupted by email notifications or even having your phone on and getting text messages, I turn all of those off. And so I'll end up checking my email about every two hours. So when I do check my emails, I can try to respond to all of them at the same time or at least organize them in a way where I can get back to everybody. 
And I even do these things in my YouTube stuff. So for example, I like to shoot multiple videos in a single day. That way I can get the recording out of the way. I don't have to worry about setting up lights and the camera each and every time I'm shooting, I can get multiple videos done in a single day. The third tip that I like to use is making your downtime into productive time. For example, when I'm in my morning commute or I'm going for a walk or I'm going for a run or I'm exercising, instead of just listening to music, I like to turn on audiobooks or podcasts or even YouTube videos where I can learn something. For example, when I'm in my morning commute, I can turn on an audiobook about productivity. Or when I'm going for a walk, I can learn about real estate, how to own your first property, buying a house, some things that I'm interested in and looking to get better at. And even when I was studying for exams, I would go on the treadmill and actually study my notes. And the fourth strategy that I like to use is systematizing and documenting your processes. For example, at work, you may have a specific software that you use that may be complicated to learn. And let's say a new employee comes in or new engineers come in, they have to learn that software as well. If they learn it by themselves, it's gonna take longer because they don't have guidance. And if you're there to help them out, it's gonna take away some of your time as well to help them out. But if you came up with a system, a step-by-step -step process on how it's supposed to be done and you document it, or maybe even take a screen recording or a video of it, you can hand that off to the new employees so they can at least get 90% of the knowledge from that document or that video. It's gonna save you time, it's gonna save your company time, and it's something that you can use to help promote yourself within your company because you're basically saving the company money because you're training others as well. And when it comes to YouTube, I'm systematizing processes as well, such as video editing. I'm still editing my videos, but I do have and documented a process on how I like my videos edited and guidelines that I follow. So eventually I can hand off the video editing to someone else. I actually learned all this stuff from a book called E-Myth, which I'll link in the descriptions below. And my last tip is to leverage existing knowledge. As an engineer, we tend to overanalyze sometimes and try to come up with uh, solutions to problems. That's what we are, we're problem solvers. But sometimes we try to solve problems that already have a solution to them, you just haven't asked or you haven't looked for it. For example, at work, you may come up with a complicated spreadsheet that does all this cool stuff and you spend hours and hours on it. But later you realize someone else in the company already made a spreadsheet for it. Or you're working on a new type of project. Maybe you've never worked on post-tension concrete before and you got assigned to a project and it's overwhelming because you've never worked on it, you never took classes, you don't know how anything works and it gets intimidating. You know, for the most part, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's going to, most likely there's going to be existing projects that you can look at, existing drawings, obviously asking your principals, your project managers and senior engineers for help on how you can learn about it. And there's gonna be a lot of books, resources, examples that you can look at to get yourself familiar with that new subject. Someone's probably done calculations for that as well. If you don't use those, oftentimes you'll often go into analysis paralysis where you're constantly not making decisions, not making progress with your project because all you're doing is going in circles. You don't know where to stop. You don't know where to start. You're pretty much frozen because you're thinking too much and you're overwhelmed. So be resourceful and use those resources that are available to you. No need to reinvent the wheel. Go find the wheel and make it better. And I did the same thing for YouTube. I didn't know what I was getting into. I did research, saw what was working for other industries and there was a lot of things that I didn't know. How to use a camera, how to use lighting. So I took classes on those, even doing YouTube classes, public speaking classes, learning from experts. No need to reinvent the wheel, find the wheel, make it better, make it your own. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.